Uh, so a lot of uh, friends, including uh, Felix, and uh, so Felix West uh, started in 2012 uh, this uh, platform called Fermando. And I remember I was at a festival in Berlin, and there were these 15 year olds or something, I don't know, they were extremely young, with handmade signs holding them up, walking through the festival saying, for a fair online marketplace. And I thought I would faint uh, because it was sort of a dream come true. Uh, and I talked to them and they said, like, well, you have to talk to this guy, Felix. Uh, so Felix will start uh, and uh, followed by uh, Yuho. So Yuho has also completely changed uh, this whole landscape uh, with his uh, company, ShareTry, by providing uh, hosting for uh, labor platforms in the space to dozens and dozens of uh, projects and it's done countless amazing things. Um, and uh, yeah, we will have Danny and uh, Edith from Co-op Co Cycle. Uh, super exciting, and uh, Rowan from uh, GetUp in Australia, Stephen from Co-op Exchange, uh, Fredrik Söderquist, uh, the hero of the uh, Swedish union movement and uh, the transformer of uh, labor unions altogether, and uh, Lisa Dessin in the end with uh, Smart uh, Belgium. So fantastic group. Uh, really looking forward to it and handing it over to Felix. Uh, enjoy. All right. Thank you, Trevor. Um, great to be here. Good morning, everyone. So, I'm from Fermondo, and Fermondo is an online marketplace. Basically, um, about six years ago, I, um, at the first presentation, I was standing there and asking people, well, guys, it's time to take down Amazon, replace it with a model that is owned by the users, and uh, who wants to join? So, at this time, I wasn't very experienced in business. I wasn't experienced with cooperatives at all. I even didn't think of making it a cooperative. I had some complicated organizational structure in mind, um, even more complicated than cooperatives. And um, yeah, then through, <clears throat> through a while and through meeting a lot of people, talking to a lot of people, um, this became more specific, more concrete. Um, we actually set up a cooperative, we set up an online marketplace, um, eBay type of model, um, a little bit like Alibaba. Um, and by now we became a bookseller ourselves, so we're kind of on the footsteps of Amazon. Um, but we haven't replaced them yet, if you haven't noticed. Um, so it's still a while to go. And actually this presentation is going to be a little different. Um, I'm. I thought of talking about lessons learned um, for people who want to start up a, a co-op and um, also to talk about a little bit about the challenges, difficulties, because it's actually not that easy. I mean, that's probably not a new insight, but still, um, it was quite a struggle um, that we lived through with Fermondo, ups and downs, um, and extremely motivating moments and extremely challenging moments. So I'm still very happy that I did it, and I'm going to end po uh, positively, but I'm going to go through challenges. Well, um, it's an online marketplace. Um, if you look at it first sight, it just looks like a shopping website. Um, we, for example, were offering the Fairphone at a time. We were talking about it yesterday. It's not the perfect product, but it's uh, been one of the good sellers on our platform because the community we are addressing right now, or we're reaching out to right now, is a very conscious, um, committed group of people, um, a very, very small share of the population. And um, that's what we realized. Um, there is a small group of people who are really enthusiastic and who are actually ready to do stuff. Um, you know it from any social movement, from any social activities. Um, there are those people who are ready to volunteer, to work, to do things. And then there's the majority. And um, so we're not yet there to reach out to the majority and um, that was one of the big challenges because it was very hard to get our marketplace model sustainable. A marketplace just works on big scale and we didn't reach that big scale fast enough so we had to find other solutions. Um, yeah, um, I just want to briefly talk about this triple challenge because I think that's quite a good way to think about it. Um, so. 
you have to build a successful business, but you also want to work for social change, really make a difference. And, um, well, you need a community if you want to get uh, scale. Um, so, if you look at the classical types of, of actors, um, like a normal business has the challenge to create a successful, um, well, revenue stream and all that. And um, that's hard enough. Starting a business, many fail. Um, NGOs want to make change, find their own revenues, uh, or own ways of funding. Um, there are classic platforms that have the business challenge and at the same time need to scale and to create networks effect, network effects. So they need to reach out to a lot of people, be, build a community. You saw Airbnb, Uber, going around, having teams walking around, telling about sharing economy and how beautiful all this is and creating really a, a whole community around this. eBay was similar. They, they had a lot of motivated people supporting this. Um, well, a platform co-op has to do it all at the same time. And that makes it really, really hard. It also makes it really, really interesting. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to go to, into too much detail with this, but um, just thinking of what do you need to do first. In the beginning, I thought we need to first focus on the so social change we want to make, talk about it, build a community, and then at some point, because we are such a big community, we're going to be a successful business. That, with Famondo, I must say, didn't work out. Um, maybe it works out for others, for us not. Um, I think at this point, it's much better to think about really having the other points in mind how you get a sustainable, viable business pretty quickly on the go because that gives you kind of the ease to, to think about the other stuff. Um, that's my personal view on this. But I'm really happy to discuss uh, in person later. Um, well, now about lessons. We spend a lot of time developing our, our specific model. And I think um, if you look, we were talking about cooperative models be before in different countries. Um, there's not the perfect model out there. And the cooperative model, at least in Germany, needs an update, in particular if you want to use it in the digital sphere. So um, we spent a lot of time on this, discussing with a lot of people, and developed this model, talked a lot about this model. And that's actually, oh yeah, <clears throat> just an idea of how our model looks. It's a multi-stakeholder co-op. Um, we have a general assembly, but we also have an employee assembly. So, um, and the employee assembly is actually electing a managing board. So um, if you want, the workers are electing their own bosses. But there are no bosses in the sense that um, I can go there and be the dictator. Um, but in a cooperative, at least in the German model, you need people who are, uh, who are um, liable for the, for the company because it's still a company. Um, and those people do need to have some certain responsibilities in the cooperative. How you design it is out and up to you, but um, this is what we put into the model. Um, if somebody goes crazy, if somebody goes too on an ego trip, um, you can just elect someone else. Um, then what really worked well for us was talking about our model. We even <clears throat> educated a group of, uh, trained a group of ambassadors. We had 40 people going around the country um, giving speeches and workshops. Um, I spent a lot of time traveling around, maybe too much time traveling around talking about the model. Um, but at least it helped us building up a co-op um, of over 2,000 members and getting some basic funding. Um, yeah, this was the first talk we gave. We were quite impressed that uh, we wanted to have like a little table discussion, but there were many people coming. Um, yeah, then another hard point, um, and this is obviously for any business venture that you're undertaking, really make sure you get the right team. Um, and that means people who are complementary to your own skills, um, not people who just perfectly are not your best friends or the people who you like most. I think it's really important that you make a good team in terms of being effective and efficient in running your business. And um, well, that's the learning we had. Um, I'm not going into details with that, but um, 
really make sure that you think a lot about who you take in the team, um, be picky, um, think twice, um, and make sure you work together well. And if you don't work together well, then decide early that you maybe, um, maybe go on different paths because um, it doesn't make sense to, to fight internally too much um, and to, to have too many internal struggles. It's really taking too much energy. Um, and you need energy for other things. Well, this is a, a picture I'm, I'm always, I always like to show because um, it shows two things. It shows that we have a committed team. Um, it was actually an intern who came up with this idea to cr cr make a naked picture of the team. And I said like, okay, um, ask everybody if everybody wants to, it's up for it, let's just go for it. So, um, and it's, uh, this picture is to represent transparency. Um, <laughs> We, uh, we have this slogan of like uh, straightforward transparency and that's one of the core values and we realized also communicating this value gave us a lot of, um, a lot of support. A lot of people, when we asked, uh, did surveys among our members, what is what you value really? Transparency. Um, then your own energy. Um, that's the learning I took myself. Um, I took a year off now, sabbatical year, um, just to recharge my batteries. It's not easy if you're in this role of managing any kind of company, a platform co-op might be even more challenging. You have all this community, you have so many people who you're kind of accountable to, who you feel responsible for. Um, take your time, take it easy. This guy <laughs> is a good idol, I think. Uh, he, he did that pretty well. And um, so take the time for that. Um, well, five more minutes. Okay, perfect. Um, Software development, that's been the, the largest burden for us. Um, it's the reason why Framondo, if it had been a classical business, wouldn't exist anymore. Um, we kept going because a bunch of crazy people kept going. Um, and the reason why we kept going is because we saw that there was a lot of positive reply. There were a lot of sellers who said, okay, a lot of vendors who said, I want to go away from Amazon, I want to come to Framondo. Um, but you, you need to get things right. Like they, they came with requirements, technical requirements, and we're working with a lot of professional sellers. We have over 1,500 professional sellers on our website, and they have, um, they have this thing, different inventory systems, data structures, and they all have the different needs. It's a multi-vendor marketplace is a very complicated piece of software, but I think most platforms are. So, um, yeah, just don't underestimate it. Um, well, just us. Um, another point that I saw a lot in the scene of uh, platform co-ops or co-ops or social businesses, um, that people are, try to ignore the role of leadership or try to talk it away and say, yeah, collective leadership, yeah, we're all one, demo democratic, everybody is the same. Um, I think that's not honest. Um, I can go to any of these co-ops, even ones with equal pay and, and job shifting, and identify the leader. Um, there are a lot of or the leaders. Um, it's there are a few people who take that role, and it's um, my view. If you have these roles, be honest about it. Um, also, to protect um, those people who, who play these roles because they're not easy to play and they take a lot of energy at some point. Um, also, because in general, I think it's better to be more honest. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I remember this picture when the, the photographer said, um, wanted me to stand in the middle. I was thinking, no, I shouldn't stand in the middle. Um, it was very in the beginning and um, yeah, but we had talks about this in the team and um, well, there were different views and uh, I just uh, can say from now after five years of running this crazy thing, um, I should have uh, taken my, my role more seriously, more openly, more honestly. Um, yeah, and then cooperation. Probably the biggest learning. Make, create space for cooperation. There had been so many opportunities for us. There had been so many potential partners. So many people who came up. Um, except for the co-ops. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I went to many co-op conferences. I, two times to the ICA. Um, it was very hard to, to get a foot somewhere, and it seems everybody is very busy with themselves. 
and um, with their own little sphere and their own little world, they have to, and I mean, I understand because we all have challenges to solve and it's complicated. Um, but I think you have to reserve this space for cooperation and make so sure that you actually have resources and capacities that are just there for this cooperation because it's our biggest strength. Um, well then, keep going. We already heard that. Um, this is one of our crowdfunding campaigns. Um, just uh, whenever, whatever difficulty you run to, um, talk about it. Allow people to help you if you have a challenge, but keep going. And um, just, uh, just now to leave at a positive end. Um, so what we're going to do with Fermondo now um, after six years? Right now, Fermondo is existing at a small scale, um, having a team in Berlin. Keeping, it, keeping the flame alive, but not um, having any dynamic going forward. And this is uh, now the question, how, what will be the next step to actually make something out of what we created? Because we, we do have some, some knowledge of the, like some, some brand, uh, how do you call it, publicity, but we, um, we're lacking a lot of things in particular on the technical side. So, one thing is going global. We're talking about this since two years. We have uh, Fermondo UK that set up. There are a lot of people who want to set up a local Fermondo, and they all have the technical challenge. Some work with Chair Tribe. Um, you're going to hear about it. But um, one thing um, I want to do personally is, um, and that will start by the end of this year, is setting up a new technical company that will hopefully cooperate with Chair Tribe in some, to some extent. Um, um, which will focus on multi-vendor marketplaces um, that work with um, professional vendors with large inventory systems. Um, this is this is the um, the goal, and um, raise sufficient capital to actually develop a high-end software. And the last uh, point is, um, I just want to mention: think if you want to kick off with a co-op like like we did, um, having all the challenges from the beginning, or th think if you have a startup. Um, kind of vehicle that doesn't have the whole model integrated and then become a co-op co later. But if you do that, make sure that you have some legal legal solution that you're really required to follow up. Thank you.